Vostok 1 was the first space flight of the Vostok program and the first crewed space flight in history. The Vostok 3 car space capsule was launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome on April 12, 1961, with Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin aboard, making him the first human to cross into outer space. The Vostok 3 car space capsule was launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome on April 12, 1961, with Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin aboard, making him the first human to cross into outer space. Gagarin parachuted to the ground separately from his capsule after rejecting at 7 km altitude. Yuri Gagarin, 27, was chosen as the prime pilot of Vostok 1, with German Titov and Grigori, Neil Lyubov as backups. One doctor gave her recollection of the events in an interview with Russia Today in April 2011, Gagarin looked more pale than usual. He was unsociable and quiet, which was not like him at all. He would answer by nodding or a short yes to all questions. Sometimes he would start humming some tunes. This was a different Gagarin. We geared him up, and hugged. And I said, Yuri, everything will be fine. And he nodded back. The letters were hand-painted onto Gagarin's helmet by engineer German Lebedev during transfer to the launch site. Prior to the flight, Kamanin and others told Gagarin the code anyway. At 10 o'clock, Gagarin and Tito were given a final review of the flight plan. Gagarin's biographers Dora and Bezonia say that neither Gagarin nor Tito slept that night. Launch would not occur for another two hours, and during the time Gagarin chatted with the mission's main Capcom, as well as chief designers Ege Korolov, Nikolai Kamanin, and a few others. Following a series of tests and checks, about 40 minutes after Gagarin entered the spacecraft, its hatch was closed. Gagarin, on the other hand, was described as calm. About half an hour before launch his pulse was recorded at 64 beats per minute. Korolov radioed, preliminary stage, intermediate, main, lift off. We wish you a good flight. Everything is all right. Gagarin replied, let's roll. 610 UT, the payload shroud covering the stock one was released, uncovering a window at Gagarin's feet, with an optical orientation device Ur. 613 UT, Gagarin reported, the flight is continuing well. I can see the earth. The visibility is good. I almost see everything. There's a certain amount of space under cumulus cloud cover. I continue the flight. Everything is good. Gagarin reported, everything is working very well. All systems are working. Let's keep going. 6.15 UT, 3 minutes into the burn of the final rocket stage, Gagarin radioed, Zaya 1, Zaya 1, I can't hear you very well. I feel fine. I'm in good spirits. I'm continuing the flight. Gagarin radioed, the lights are on on the descent mode monitor. I'm feeling fine, and I'm in good spirits. Cockpit parameters, pressure 1, humidity 65, temperature 20, pressure in the compartment 1, first automatic 155, second automatic 155, pressure in the retro rocket system 320 atmospheres. 625 UT. As Vostok 1 began its diagonal crossing of the Pacific Ocean from Kamchatka Peninsula to the southern tip of South America, Gagarin requested information about his orbital parameters, what can you tell me about the flight? What can you tell me? 631 UT, Gagarin transmitted to the Khabarovsk ground station, I feel splendid, very well, very well, very well. Give me some results on the flight. Gagarin transmitted again, I feel very good. Give me your data on the flight. The stock one then passed out of VHF range of the Khabarovsk ground station. 649 UT, Gagarin reported he was on the night side of the earth. 653 UT, the Khabarovsk ground station sent Gagarin via HF radio, by order of number 33, the transmitters have been switched on, and we are transmitting this. The flight is proceeding as planned and the orbit is as calculated. The stock one was now known to be in a stable orbit, Gagarin acknowledged. 718 UT, Gagarin sent another spacecraft status message, not received by ground stations. 723 UT, Gagarin sent another spacecraft status message, not received by ground stations. 
at 755 UT, when the stock one was still 7 kilometers from the ground, the hatch of the spacecraft was released, and two seconds later Gagarin was ejected. Gagarin's parachute opened almost right away, and about 10 minutes later, at 8.05 UT, Gagarin landed. Gagarin later recalled, when they saw me in my spacesuit and the parachute dragging alongside as I walked, they started to back away in fear. Gagarin's informal reply Poye Kale became a historical phrase used to refer to the arrival of the space age in human history. The Soviet press later reported that, minutes before boarding the spacecraft, Gagarin made a speech, Dear friends, you who are close to me, and you whom I do not know, fellow Russians, and people of all countries and all continents, in a few minutes a powerful space vehicle will carry me into the distant realm of space. Although some contemporary Soviet sources stated that Gagarin had parachuted separately to the ground, the Soviet Union officially insisted that he had landed with the Vostok, the government forced the cosmonaut to lie in press conferences, and the FI certified the flight. The Soviet Union did not admit until 1971 that Gagarin had ejected and landed separately from the Vostok descent module.